Let's talk about the Olympics, though. I'm delighted to say Eve McChrystal is with us, who is a tandem pilot. Eve, good morning to you. How are you getting on? Good morning. How are you? Yeah, good. Um, I'd say you've had one eye, kind of, but definitely on all of the shenanigans going on in uh, Japanese politics at the moment and the debates about whether or not it's going to happen. It looks now more likely than not that both the Olympics and the Paralympics will happen. Yeah, I think so. Um, I kind of didn't really tend to... <laughs> really listen too much because I found it it was just too much I was putting on on the radio and I could hear um kind of negative stuff about Tokyo and I suppose I just had to focus on myself and hopefully that it all worked out in the end but I think I think we're nearly there I think we've w one step on the plane so hopefully hopefully it'll go ahead so tell us what a tandem pilot is and, and how how does that actually work because it, it, it's um I think one of the the joys of the Paralympics is everybody getting to understand exactly how each of the sports works and and what everybody's role in the, the sport is. So you're a tandem pilot in cycling. What does that do? What do you do? Yeah, so I suppose um, on one bike, there's two people on it. I'm the pilot and Katie George Dunleavy is my stoker. That's her, I suppose, official name on the bike. And Katie is partially sighted, so she does have some sight, but she wouldn't be in a position to ride a bike on her own. So basically, She's at the back, I'm at the front, and I have on the eyes essentially on the bike. I have control of the gears, the braking, the decisions we make on the road. But when I say decisions, so does Katie. There's a big communication piece on the bike. So um, we definitely move, move as one unit. I would just be the eyes and, um, as I said, select the gears and, and the initial move in a road race or, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. we're definitely a team. And uh, are you shouting at each other? Is, is it like over the over the wind, or is there? Uh, is, have you reached the point now where it's kind of like just a, okay, let's go and tapping on the shoulder? How does that work? Yeah, no, we kind of. Katie would say um, she she knows by my body language. Uh, she would always say if my left shoulder dips, there's something happening, or I'm under pressure. So <laughs> she um, she kind of knows by my body language at this stage. But if if as I said, Katie does have some sight, so she will she will see a bike come in and she will nearly tell me before I see it. So, um, yeah, but we do, we work, we kind of work well together. And as you said, we've been together for years now. So we, we do know each other inside out when it comes to racing a bike, that's for sure. Our, our colleague, Clina Foley, wrote a great piece about that partnership um, a while back. I think it might have been th three or four years ago uh, about you guys coming together. You were introduced, but you were complete strangers and, and just had to, decide very quickly about whether or not this was going to work. How did that all come about? How did you end up volunteering to become a pilot? Yeah, no, I didn't volunteer. It was, um, it was a bit of a different process in that. Katie was in London. Um, her pilot was Sandra Fitzgerald um, at the London Paralympics. And following that, Sandra stepped aside and there was a position there for the pilot. So Cycling Ireland were looking for, for a new pilot. At the time, the Irish National Championships were held in Carlingford. 2015, God, um, 2014. Sorry, I keep uh, the years now. Um, but I was bronze, um, bronze medal in the time trial. And following that result, I was asked by Neil Delahay, he's still our coach, would I try out for the position of pilot? And I was tested in the Institute of Sport, and I got the seat. Right. And um, after that, then I think Katie has family in Swords. Um, I was asked to be at Swords on a particular day, a particular time, and the tandem was there and hopped on the bike. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, there's a lot of roundabouts in Swords. Uh, <laughs> navigated them, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're going to our second Paralympics, so it kind of went from there. But yeah, we, we, we got on very well from the start. Um, Katie's very easy. You know, I'd always say in, in interviews, we're very different off the bike, um, different personality types completely. But, you know, we, we, we have, I suppose, the one vision that we always did uh, together, I suppose, was to get that gold medal. And we kind of worked, we're working hard to try and try and get, get one. It was difficult. <laughs> I'm sure. But it's, it's a remarkable difference between being an individual athlete in such an individual sport as cycling is to then going to being literally part of a team on the same bike? Yeah, I, I find that transition, I, I find that easy. Um, I have to be honest. I, I I love the team aspect of it. As cycling, as a solo rider, you know, it's a like a, a lonely sport, I suppose, if you're training on your own, um, unless you've been out with a group of people. But, you know, I train on my own a lot because of the children. I'm not always able to go out with a group of cyclists on their timeline. I have to go on my own. 
So I think when I got with Katie, I just enjoyed the team aspect of it. I enjoyed being part of the high performance team and the other guys on the team. Um, yeah, so it wasn't, I, I didn't find that difficult at all. You know, um, I love going to training camps and it's just a great, a great buzz about it. And yeah, I, I enjoy it. I think if I had been a, maybe 20 years younger getting into cycling, I, my goal might have been a, a domestic in the pro ranks, maybe that would have been an ideal job for me, but I didn't start till I was in my late 30s. So <laughs> yeah, I wish I had known about it earlier, I think. Well, that's a pretty remarkable uh, bit of detail. Uh, what got you into cycling in your late 30s? Um, well, actually, yeah, it was early 30s, I did triathlon. So um, I did, I competed in, well, I wouldn't say compete, I took part <laughs> in two Ironman events um, in between. I had two children. So it was a busy few years, but I think when my second daughter was born, I didn't have the time for three disciplines. Um, and I was always stronger on the bike. So I said, look, the swim and, and running is going to have to go. So I just I stayed on the bike and that was it. Yeah, but I was just late coming to it, you know. Were you competitive so, as, a, as a kid, like, a, a, you know, in your, in your teens? Were you a cyclist at that stage? No, 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 never. I didn't. I, I was able to ride a bike, I suppose, like most people, but no. Didn't even know it existed, didn't know. <laughs> Triathlon was my first introduction um, into cycling with a, a local uh, club, Satanta Triathlon Club here in Cullen, Cycling Club in Dundalk, but no, I, I had no idea it happened. There was always track and field. My brother is uh, like an amazing footballer, so you're always kind of, um, you know, in his shadow a bit, and he was crazy sports, sports uh, guy, so. But I always enjoyed the fun part of sport. I was never any good at track and field. You know, I was always kind of last and looking forward to the sandwiches that mom took in the picnic with my friends. But no, I never really had that, I suppose, competitive edge. I just really enjoyed it, you know? And did, so that was it, yeah. <laughs> there was obviously some kind of awakening though when someone started to talk about high performance, when, when the Ironman led you to a level of fitness that you were like, actually, hang on a second, I, I'm, I can do this and I can continue to get better at it. Yeah, I think after the Ironman, um, my second Ironman did quite well. I, I feel I did quite a good Ironman. I had a great bike split. I kind of said, geez, maybe I'm, maybe I'm good on this bike. And I think being asked by Neil to even try and be selected for the pilot, it just, it gave me a confidence, I think, in myself. Um, Jesus, maybe if somebody must have seen something there. So let, just, I'll go with it. And then... When I did get tested, my, my results were, were pretty good. So then I said, I suppose like all of that together then, I was like, well, maybe I can do it. And it just completely changed my life around. It was like a complete 360. Like um, my job is I'm a member of Vanguard of Shikana. So like it was a com complete roller coaster of, oh, I don't know, my, everything changed. I had two babies. Um, I was working as a guard. This was, you know, given to me to maybe try and do something with it. And I just, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just said, I'll go for it and see what happens. And oh, I don't have one regret. I just, I love it. I absolutely love what I do. I really enjoy it. So how did you get on in Rio? Good. Rio was really good. Uh, we got gold in the time trial. Very, did not expect that. Um, we had no idea. We were never, well, I was never the Paralympics before. Uh, Katie had fifth and seventh place in London. So, yeah, it was really unexpected. And that was our driving force, I think, for Tokyo then. That's kind of, it was like another kind of light. It was like, Jesus, okay, we do have something here. We're after winning. Um, we just put a, a really good ride. Um, and then we got, from that, then we got silver in the road race. That wasn't expected either. So, yeah, and then we just kind of came back and I never had any intentions of going to Tokyo. It was never in my plan, ever. Um, and five years later, I'm still here. So, yeah, it's, sport is not a linear line. You know, it's, there's a lot of ups and downs and twists and turns and just things you don't expect. But, yeah, we're, we're still, I'm older as well, you know, so that's always in the back of my mind, you know. Um, but, yeah, Rio was good and it definitely, it definitely made us push on for Tokyo. And in terms of the level that you're at at the moment versus the level you were at pre-Rio, is the performance that you're putting in at the moment as good as it was then? Oh, we're better athletes than Rio, yeah. Oh, yeah, moved on big time. Um, 
we've just trained so hard. Um, I suppose we've had a longer period of time. We've been together now five, six, eight, seven years, eight, seven years maybe. So look, we've all of that endurance built. We've you learn so much more about yourself every year, even every race. You learn new things. You know, you're never you never stop learning. Um, we're better athletes. We're more focused. Um, we know what works. From we've great support in the institute with nutrition and psych and physio and everything. We there's a great team around us. Um, and I suppose we we just use all of those people and tr to try and get the best out of ourselves, but. We're definitely better athletes um, since Rio, yeah, that's and for sure. So take take that part of it, right? Then also take the fact that you've got the medals banked. Does that yeah. bring an enjoyment, an excitement and a pressure? What's that ratio of enjoyment and anticipation that you have versus a little bit of, ooh, there's a bit of pressure here. We've got to make sure that we actually manage to deliver this time. How do you... Um, yeah, right, I wouldn't... I. I don't really feel that pressure. Um, so much has gone on, I think, in my life outside of sport that I kind of use sport as, um, let me see, therapy, I suppose, for myself. And I, so if I'm in sport and I feel pressure to win, I wouldn't be in it, I don't think, for the right reasons. Um, if the enjoyment is taken out of it for me, why am I there? Um, we went in, we had the World Championships last weekend. We went in as four-time world champs. On the time trial, we were second. Um, I didn't, you know, after that, I was like, right, they were second. Katie was disappointed. I was disappointed, but I got over it the following day. Do you know, that's, you know, we just, you, you move on. You, you, move, you move on from it. And, um, sorry, man at the door. Um, no worries. You just... You just um, just move on from it, and I learn from the mistakes. I take full responsibility. I don't think I handled the bike very well. There was forty-seven corners. I haven't raced in two years, so um, yeah, we discuss after it, and I, I I don't feel pressure to get that gold in Tokyo. I I don't know why. Maybe I should feel a bit of pressure. No, it's really interesting but, because like so, were you always like this, or is this because you came late to the sports, like? The, the no, this the, no, the, this I would have felt more pressure in Rio. Um, as I said, I suppose I, I lost my father in 2017, and after that things changed. So I didn't sport, as I said, is enjoyment. I work as hard as I can to get the most out of myself. And if a medal comes on the back of that, that's amazing. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Life yeah. moves on, you know. <laughs> It's only sport at the end of the day. It has given me, I can step away from the guards for a couple of years. I'm on a career break to collect my, leave my children to school, collect them, make dinner. So I'm in a very privileged position. You know, sport has given me that. So I, that's why it's like, I, I don't feel pressure then, I think. Cause I know I've done all I can. Yeah. I'm gonna line up at the start line full of confidence knowing I've ticked every single box to be in the best possible shape as I can be to be here. Katie has done exactly the same, full confidence that she's there in the best possible shape because our coach has us there to race and to win. But if something happens, something happens and I can't control that. So I can only control what I can control and that is to get there in the best shape that I can. Well, the and if the medal comes in the back of that, that's amazing. The conviction that you've done everything you possibly can it brings calmness. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm nervous, don't get me wrong. Ah, yeah. like, I'll, be ner I'll be nervous, but the excitement. I won't be a nervous. Yeah, it's exc it's, I'm excited, yeah. Nervously excited, I suppose, yeah, yeah. And but so it's, not, it's not a pressure. Uh, look, it's a, it's a remarkable story and I think people will, will uh, you know, really rally behind everything you've talked about this morning. I think it, it's also really interesting when people discover things that were latent in them, late in life, and then manage to deliver on their potential in in the way that you have. It's a, it's. I think again, it's a, it's a real lesson to people like to go for whatever is available to them whenever something is available to them, and not think, ah, look, it's too late, or that's passed me by, or my chance was when I was ten years younger or twenty years younger. Yeah, I, I agree, and it's not, you know, I'm, I'm 43 now next month, and my numbers 
I'm still getting better. I don't know how much better I'll get, but like just still, you know, I'm still hitting numbers that I haven't hit, you know, 12 months ago, you know, so um, I haven't slowed down. So I was just supposed to encourage anybody to just go for it. And I try and instill that in the kids, just go for it. You don't know what's going to happen, you know, and yeah, I think it's, we're, we're never too late to try anything really, are we? And to enjoy the journey on the way. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoy it. I enjoy what I do. And I guess the other thing is that in all sports careers, you know, uh, father time is undefeated is the cliche. Like, you, you do know that there's a limited amount of times that you're going to be able to do this at this level. Does that bring mm -hmm. some clarity and joy or is there a sadness around that? No, um, it's like... <laughs> I was like... Um, I suppose after this, like I'm saying to Kate, I'm not going to Paris, don't ask me, I'm not going. Um, so we just make that, you know, clear. But like I'm still saying, I could do another Ironman, you know, because that's like longer and slower. So I always have these, you know, I have other things in my head that I'd like to do. So sport will always be part of my life um, because I suppose it's, the, it's, it's definitely the best medicine the best happiness I'm you know I really enjoy it so I'm not just going to you know hang up my cycling shoes I'll definitely get back into the pool and try and shuffle my way around a run I'll, I'll find something else I've got <laughs> I've got to ask you, you you talked about your brother and the lads were, were digging so was he on the book at Leeds is that right is that have we got the right brand? yes yeah yeah so, he was yes yeah. so I had to live up to that all my life do you know how hard that was I'd say pretty hard <laughs> And then he's a, a record, or the Irish record holder for Ironman. Yeah, so he's, well, I think he's pretty amazing, but he's a, he's a great sportsman, yeah. So he was with Leeds for years, yeah. And how many yeah. uh, Olympic gold medals does he have? Oh, no, he doesn't have any of those. Well, there you go. You're, you're <laughs> you know, I think it's, uh, you know, there's swings and roundabouts here. But I, I'm interested, like, you know, when he was a kid, obviously there was far more very clear pathways for him to use his clear genetic talents yeah do you feel like if it had been the same for you when you were 15 12 to 15 and if someone had recognized your talent as a cyclist at that point or do you think things are different now I, I guess I'm kind of everything always comes back to the 20 by 20 campaign and how we just need to make sure that whatever gains were made in that are actually filtering down for various yeah. people like because look participation is the single most important thing and having fun after that but there's also probably some elite athletes who we're missing out on. Oh, absolutely. And as you said, the 2020 campaign is massive. Like, visibility is key. And if cycling had been there when I was younger, yes, I might have tried it. Um, like, as well as being a brilliant footballer, Brian is a, an unbelievable cyclist. So it must be in the genes. So if I had been there when we were, you know, 15, 16, and we tried it, like, God knows where we would have been, and... The, you know, I started a race on Sunday, the first race of the National Road Series in Limerick on Sunday was there and I saw loads of new faces, you know, faces that I haven't seen before. And like, that's brilliant. And I, I do think it, it comes, as you said, with the 2020 campaign, the visibility is key and to put cyclists, to put cycling out there for people to see and try it because you don't know what talent is there, you know? So, and, yeah, and it's good. Mm. Triathlon is the gateway drug as well for loads of people and stuff. Oh yeah, like triathlon's massive, isn't it? Really, you know, and they just oh yeah, it's, it's huge. There's, the clubs around the country are just they're just growing and growing, and especially for women in sport, is to just take it in and try and you know don't be afraid and don't let things put you, you know, put you off. And I think that there's a big fear element for women. I think Cycling Ireland run the bike like me or the ran the bike like me program um, during COVID, and I did them in my my training room on a Monday night. You know, I had an hour of. Uh, indoor bike sessions and I think there was the first block was 800 women registered wow you know in all different parts of of the country it was a huge you know and the, the, them women are there for enjoyment some of them want to race some of them just want to go for coffee on the bike to meet their friends and there's so many different aspects of cycling you know so yeah visibility is definitely key well, listen, you're a brilliant ambassador for it, and we wish you the very best of luck. Loads of comments coming in. What a woman, best of luck in Tokyo, says Hugo. Paul O'Connor says, what an inspiration, best of luck, yeah, even Katie. Well, you've, we're, we're counting down now in weeks as opposed to months before you're yeah. actually getting on the plane. So what happens now in the meantime? Do you have any, like, final races? Do you taper down? Like, are you in the midst of a quite hardcore training session at the moment? How's that working? 
Um, no, we're going to Mallorca on uh, Sunday, this Sunday, coming for a training camp, um, two and a half weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I hate being away from the kids, but I'm going. And um, it's two and a half weeks, so that'll be intense. And then we're home for two weeks and then we're away. We've a holding camp before we head into Tokyo. So, no, it's pretty intense, I suppose, from now in. Um, yeah, I can. and that makes a flyby, I think, as well. You know, it's just you're just taking off each day and trying to recover um, as best you can. But, like, unfortunately for Irish athletes, we have to go to New York to train because we don't have a velodrome in this country. <laughs> so, yesterday, actually, myself and Katie went to Sundrive, our outdoor velodrome, the first time we've been in anything like that in 18 months. So, it's... I said before, it's like the swimmers have been expected to swim and with no swimming pool. So hopefully we'll get a velodrome um, short or hope soon. But uh, we don't have one and we've to go to Mallorca to train. So that's where we're going next week. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, enjoy the trip. I'm sure your kids, like the rest of the country, are very proud. Eve, thanks a million oh, for joining yeah. us. Cheers. Oh, thanks for having me. Bye. That was brilliant. It's uh, Eve McChrystal there talking to us about the uh, cycling in the Paralympics. And obviously we'll be keeping a very close eye on that as things move between now and then.